<laughs> Pretty much everything you need to know about acquiring and using a Fenrir in Ark Survival Evolved. Fenrirs can only be acquired on the Ark Fjordur DLC map, but they're not found within the open world like most other creatures. Instead, a single Fenrir is awarded upon defeating the Fjordur unique boss, Fenris Olver. My Chinese neighbor's middle name. The Fenris Olver boss encounter can be activated at any of the three main obelisks across the Fjordur map. Like most other boss creatures in the game, it has a Beta, Gamma, and Alpha tier encounter. Depending upon which difficulty you choose, the requirements for entry and rewards for completion change, as you're seeing on the screen right now. If you're having trouble locating one of the three obelisks to start the fight, you're a fucking moron. Open your eyes, Jim, it's right there! <coughs> Alright, so normally at this point in the video, I would dive into the taming process of the creature, but given that the Fenrir technically has no taming process, I'll instead talk a little bit about the boss encounter. The boss fight takes place in a very small, blistering cold environment, with temperatures reaching as low as negative 30 degrees Celsius. Even with 110 fortitude, my survivor was constantly shitting his guts out from the harsh temperatures, so insulated clothing, free of curry, and medical brews are highly recommended for all tiers of the encounter. Up to 20 tames are allowed within the boss fight encounter, and you'll want to use every last slot. Shadow Mains and Spinos are fantastic choices to bring along for the boss fight, as the river system that runs through the center of the arena will provide them with the hydrated buff. Rexes are also a solid choice, but they're like white bread at this point. It's fucking white bread. At least one Uteranus is always recommended due to the courageous war buff it applies to allied creatures, but just be sure to activate it within a radio wheel menu if no one is riding it. A Deodon can be quite useful as well, as it provides some passive healing over time to your creatures, but it does take up one of your available slots that could otherwise be used for DPS. Having a tribe mate on an Andrew Sarkis or two may not be a bad idea as well, as the protective saddle will keep them safe against Fenris Olver's Howling ability, and the ranged DPS can provide some nice cover fire. Fenris Olver has one of the highest health values of any boss in the game, so needless to say, this is not an easy fight and should not be taken lightly. You'll be going up against hordes of Fenrir, sweeping storms, giant ice spikes, freezing howls, mana-like ice beams, f***ing rubber chickens, you name it and this thing has it. The only final word of advice I'll give is to be careful not to get too close to the boss during the fight, as its howl can damage you on the back of your chosen creature and it completely ignores armor values. Now given that I'm making this video in creative single player, I obviously don't have an army of imprinted creatures to go up against this thing, but I wonder what would happen if I used the admin rifle. Mission accomplished. Good work. Upon defeating the Fenrir Solver boss encounter, a single cryopotted Fenrir is rewarded, but the level of the tame is dependent upon the difficulty you completed. The stats of the cryopotted Fenrir seem to be predetermined, with the exception of one of its stats being randomly higher. For example, an Alpha Tier Fenrir will have 35 points distributed at each of its stats except for speed, with one of those stats being randomly chosen to be a 49 stat. This means that while you're always guaranteed a high stat Fenrir, you may have to complete the encounter multiple times to get the high stat that you're looking for. Fenrirs cannot be bred, imprinted, or cloned. The Fenrir does not require a saddle in order to ride, as it comes naturally equipped with frozen fur armor that provides a base armor value of 10. This armor can be further boosted up to a maximum of 80 with the use of their frigid armor ability, but we'll get to that more in just a moment. Alright, so let's dive into the controls and functionality of the Fenrir to showcase some of what it can do. The Fenrir features a basic bite attack with the left mouse button, an ice bite attack with the right mouse button, a frigid armor buff activated by pressing the C key, a shift key sprint ability, and a space bar jump ability. The Fenrir's movement speed seems to be about average, although its maneuverability seems a little tighter than some of Ark's other creatures. They can jump for decent lengths of horizontal distance, but their vertical leap is quite lacking. If you don't mind looking absolutely ridiculous on an otherwise intimidating mount, you could always choose to spam the spacebar while sprinting to get around faster. Just don't fall off the cliff like I did. The Fenrir's Ice Bite ability applies a slowing debuff to the affected target, which can be incredibly useful for keeping prey from getting away. There is a small UI element at the bottom of your screen that keeps track of this ability's cooldown, which seems to be about 10 seconds. The Fenrir's Frigid Armor ability can be used to damage and freeze everything in the adjacent area, while looking absolutely badass in the process. While this buff is active, the Fenrir's natural armor value increases from 10 to 80, your survivor gains plus 225 to their insulation stats, you deal retaliatory damage to anything attacking you, and you gain complete immunity to being frozen. Please note that this buff only affects the Fenrir you're riding, and will steadily drain your stamina as long as it's active. Dismounting the Fenrir with this buff running will deactivate it after a short amount of time. Fenrirs feature a stacking pack bonus system similar to Direwolves, that increases their damage by plus 5% for each member of the pack, up to a maximum of plus 4. This damage boost will also affect adjacent Fenrirs that don't contribute towards the pack bonus. 
Fenrir seem to directly affect nearby tamed direwolves, as their eyes begin to glow when near a Fenrir and they receive 12.5% less damage while dealing 25% more. Alright, so with all these controls and functionality in mind, what is the Fenrir's main use? Aside from reminding me about the direwolves in Game of Thrones, and about how pissed off I am and how that series ended. I don't want it. Well, the Fenrir doesn't boast a ton of abilities or functions like some of the other creatures in the game, but in the categories that it does dabble into, it's quite strong. Given their high base melee damage, small hitbox, decent maneuverability, slowing and freezing abilities, and all of the advantages of the frigid armor buff, I would categorize the Fenrir as either a boss fighting mount or a PvP mount. If a boss fighting mount is what you're looking for, you want to invest mainly into health, stamina, and melee damage. The Fenrir features a naturally high health pull and solid base damage that is only further augmented with their pack bonuses, making them an excellent choice to use in boss fight scenarios. With that being said, I would only recommend bringing Fenrirs if tribe mates are riding them, as otherwise their frigid armor ability can't be used, and their base armor value without it is extremely low. Their passive freeze immunity with their frigid armor buff running is incredibly helpful in the fight against Fenrir Solver, but be careful not to get caught in its howling ability like I did, as otherwise... You're gonna have a bad time! If a PvP mount is what you're looking for, you want to invest mainly into health, stamina, and damage, with optional point investment into movement speed and weight depending upon your playstyle. The Fenrir's Ice Bite ability can be used to slow down enemy creatures or players in PvP scenarios, which can certainly turn the tide of battle if properly used. Additionally, their Frigid Armor can be used to temporarily freeze groups of enemies to allow for more strategic planning, or to take some of the pressure off of your tribe in heated fights. This armor also protects against the freezing effects of enemy Snow Owls, which can be incredibly useful if the enemy is trying to dive bomb you. Alright, well that about wraps up this video! Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave this video a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded wooden creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bonnet heart. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.